if not the select figures, then some of the other formats that we offer. And I'm going to run down some of the stuff that's upcoming. And then uh, I'll stop periodically and we'll have a little Q&A if anybody has any questions about anything they've seen. Um, and uh, I'll have a little prize for anybody who has a cool question. And uh, give some prize out at the end for some of the best questions. And uh, please, if you have any questions specifically for anyone in the uh, painting or digital sculpting or uh, traditional sculpting fields, uh, please, by all means, uh, start thinking of them now. And uh, I would love to be able to give these guys something to answer. Because sometimes they have nothing to answer. Anyway, let's get going. Uh, one of our new licenses for this year is The Dark Tower. Um, everybody I, may not know exactly what this movie is, but if you are a fan of Stephen King, then you know what The Dark Tower is. And if you've seen the commercials, then you know that it looks pretty awesome uh, and has a pretty great cast. And uh, we're excited to be doing select action figures in the 7-inch scale for them. They will be available in select, uh, at specialty stores and uh, comic shops in the select format uh, with these dioramas, and also in a more basic format, Toys R Us. And we're looking to have these out uh, shortly after the movie. I don't know if we'll have them out in August in time for the movie, but uh, shortly after they will be hitting stores. We're also going to be offering uh, some of our gallery PVC dioramas. These are slightly bigger scale, 9-inch scale. And uh, we're starting out for the Man in Black and the Gunslinger. And these are going to be out I, probably a little bit after the select figures, so look for them in the fall. Our other big license for uh, this year, or more likely end of this year, early next year, is Kingdom Hearts. Uh, we're going to be offering these in a select format as well, that larger scale packaging. Uh, and the select packages will come with three different figures in them. This is one of the sets, the uh, one with Sora and uh, a soldier and Dusk. And then one with uh, Axel and Nikki and a, uh, a Darkness there. And those will be the two sets offered at comic shops and specialty stores. There will be some uh, two packs offered at Toys R Us and some uh, single packs offered at Walgreens. And there will be some figures that are also offered uh, at Target and GameStop. Um, for the most part, they're going to be the same, these same six characters with a couple of additional uh, variations. Uh, here you can see the uh, Master Form Sora and the Wisdom Form Sora. As you can see, uh, Master Form is going to be, I'm sorry, Valor Form, I apologize. Valor Form is going to be at uh, GameStop and the uh, Wisdom Form is going to be at Target. And there will be actually a Master Form, I apologize. I believe that one is exclusive to, I want to say, Toys R Us. And Walgreens will have an exclusive uh, Pluto accessory for their Nikki action figures, so keep an eye out for that. Uh, and we do have uh, several waves planned out for Kingdom Hearts, I should say, so um, hopefully before those hit stores, you'll be seeing uh, pictures from Series 2 and maybe even Series 3. Obviously, a lot of different characters come from a lot of different worlds in each series, and we're you know, working with Disney to make sure that they are as authentic and accurate as possible. Uh, Ghostbusters. Uh, if you've been following along, uh, applause, thank you. Uh, Ghostbusters Series 5 uh, pretty much just hit stores not very long ago, and that means that you can complete your diorama. Uh, series 5 is actually not visible here, but it's a uh, taxi driver ghost, uh, library ghost, and the terror dog, uh, who has the interchangeable horns, so you can um, have two different versions. And those basic versions are available at Toys R Us, uh, but the select versions with the diorama pieces are only at comic shops, especially stores. Uh, Marshmallow Winston, um, there was some incorrect information out there that uh, was not, uh, that I didn't get a chance to catch in time before the show started, but um, it is not, a, it was not a con exclusive. This will actually be a comic shop, and specialty source. It's not a select figure. It's not going to come with a diorama piece. It's just going to be a basic action figure. It'll retail for about $19.99, and um, that one will be about comic shops. And there will be a Marshmallow Egon. We previously did Marshmallow Ray for Toys R Us and Marshmallow Peter for San Diego last year and for comic shops. Um, but uh, Eon will be an exclusive at Toys R Us. We're moving on uh, in the wake of Series 5 with Series 6. Uh, we're moving on to Ghostbusters 2. You can see uh, Gray using uniform Ray and Vigo the Carpathian and uh, uh, Lewis in his Ghostbusters uniform. Uh, we're looking to have these out by the end of the year. And this will be the start of building the new diorama, the Ghostbusters Firehouse Doors. Um, 
it uh, only goes up to right above the sign. It's not a full building. Uh, we honestly could not figure out how many figures it would take to build an entire firehouse, but this is a, it's a pretty big diorama. If you didn't see it in the display case downstairs, it's, it's still very impressive. And the doors are all hinged, so you can walk in and out of the door. The figures, not you, the figures can walk in and out of the doors, and the, the, um, if you have a vehicle that you would like to drive through those doors, you certainly can. We've talked about the possibility of doing some sort of an action figure uh, vehicle in the scale, um, but um, I'm not sure how Serious those discussions have been as of yet. We'll, we'll see how these go, and it's certainly something we'd like to do. Uh, you can see here Series 7 on display, uh, which is Janos Poha, uh, Gray Uniform Peter, and Slime Blower Ray. I'm sorry, Winston. And then you can see one of the figures from Series 8, which is Gray Uniform Egon. I believe the other two figures in Series 8 will be Gray Uniform Winston and Slime Blower Ray. Uh, and uh, then we are going to be moving on to Series 9. And Series 9 will start our line of real Ghostbusters. So, of the three, five waves, 15 figures you need to build the, the firehouse, there will be nine figures from Ghostbusters 2, and then these next six figures from real Ghostbusters. We're not going to to that lineup yet. Obviously, you can guess who four of them will be, but uh, those will be obviously 2018 items at this point. Um, if we have the first wave out, if we have Series 6 out by the end of the year, couple more waves in 2018, so maybe late 2018 we'll have the real Ghostbusters out, but I'm sure you'll be seeing them much long before then. Uh, maybe as early as New York Toy Fair. I, I can't say we'll have anything at uh, New York Comic Con this year, but uh, by February of next year I'm sure you'll see the full, the full line uh, for real Ghostbusters and Ghostbusters too. Nightmare Before Christmas. Uh, series 3 will come out uh, around Halloween this year, uh, probably earlier. Uh, these are the select versions. You can see uh, that Santa comes with an elf, uh, and that Lock, Shock, and Barrel come with their bathtub. Uh, and Pumpkin King will come with a part of the fountain uh, for the town square. We've released two pieces already, I believe, with um, Dr. Finkelstein and with Santa Jack. Uh, and there will be another piece of the cobblestones coming with Santa Claus. Uh, this is only with the select versions and specialty stores. And then there will be a larger piece of the uh, fountain from the town square that comes with the Pumpkin King. And uh, then there will be two more pieces in Series 4. I believe Behemoth and uh, Corpse Boy come with another section of the cobblestones there. And I am fairly certain that Zero comes with um, the upright portion of the fountain. I need to double check if um, Pumpkin King comes with the upright portion or the, or the basin that everything falls into. Uh, the other part comes with Zero. Zero will be his own release with that large piece of the diorama. So uh, those six figures will be able to build that, that diorama you see right there. And of course, Pajama Jack in Series 6 will, will just come with this big black board. There will be basic versions of these at Toys R Us without the diorama pieces and without any of the large um, other additional uh, dioramas that, that come with the figures. So Zero, you know, what you see up there is some of the stuff that he's going to come with. Um, uh, Corpse, I believe Behemoth will still come with Corpse Boy. Pajama Jack won't come with his blackboard, obviously. There will additionally be some uh, exclusives, non-select uh, basic figures. Um, Books a Million will have a Wicked Jack, uh, giving a wicked laugh. Uh, Walgreens will have a, uh, will bring back Smiling Jack Skellington and Smiling Santa Jack, uh, as well as Sally. Uh, Sally will be um, the, the basic upright figure from the original release. And there'll be a sad, uh, lamenting Jack at Spencer's. Uh, look for these all. I believe I believe they should all be shipping um, either around Halloween or a little later. We also have a new PVC diorama in the gallery line coming. You may have seen our Sally holding the basket. Um, it's a PVC statue, about $45. She gets a retail price. This is our Jack. And we are going to continue the cloth coffin doll line, um, although he won't come in a coffin. He'll likely come in a box. Uh, Santa. And uh, there will also be a boxed zero release. Uh, no cloth on him, uh, but he will be in scale to those cloth releases, and he comes with his uh, doghouse diorama. We're also releasing a line of Bresden busts uh, Santa Jack, uh, Jack, Sally, Werewolf, and uh, the Mayor. You can also see zero in the display case downstairs. I'll take a break right there for a second. Does anybody have any questions? Oh, excellent. All right, so uh, I'm an artist. I'm working on sculpting my own figurines and whatnot. Um, quick question with technology being so smart. Do you stick with like clay or polymer or something like that, or do you move on to like 3D printing or whatever? 
Well, um, I'm the only guy at this table who really does everything uh, traditionally as we speak. Uh, right now, it's uh, <clears throat> right now. I've been getting the you know the need for having things done by hand has been uh, keeping me afloat, or at least for now anyway. But uh, eventually, I will have to join everybody else in the future. Uh, in regards to materials, uh, usually when it comes to the smaller things, I will use uh, wax or castelline. In other words, the smaller the piece, uh, the denser or thicker the material. Uh, usually when I work on larger pieces, uh, like <clears throat> some of the bus banks, or, like, or should I say some of the more recent bus banks, I will use uh, hard grid chavant. And, uh, uh, but the important thing is this kind of knowing is having a feel for your materials, whether it's uh, practical or virtual. I hope I answered your question. Yeah. Adam, how much call do you have for uh, traditional sculpting at uh, General Time? We're we're ninety nine point nine percent digital at this point. Um, I'd say start looking into ZBrush if you're a traditional artist. ZBrush is going to come most naturally to you. Um, Hard surface modeling would be Maya, but that's a little bit of a different skill set than most traditional artists don't like that quite as much. But um, ZBrush is something you should take a look at. Watch YouTube videos, there's tutorials out there, and um, yeah, give it a shot. It's a, it's a fairly inexpensive program. It's like $600, $700. Uh, some of the others are really expensive. <laughs> Any other questions? Yes, sir. Ooh, a microphone. Um, so, with the success of the Ghostbusters diorama pieces, you had done, like, back in the day, Buffy uh, figures. You had done, like, dio pieces on their own. Is there any chance that we would see more, like, sets or dio pieces that we can purchase? Um, I think it's come up before, and I don't think um, our president has necessarily um, considered it too seriously. I mean, we do still see them as being, you know, part of the appeal of our figures, you know, is that they do come with those pieces. Um, obviously, the figures are great on their own. You know, they, Toys R Us gets them, and they, they seem to do just fine with them. So, but, uh, but the dioramas are something that we, we like to have as an addition. And I'm not saying that it would never happen, and he'll say never say never, which is his favorite catchphrase, but... Uh, um, I don't know if the library set we did, which was really the only diorama we ever actually produced on its own, I believe. Um, I don't think that for Buffy really did gangbusters. Uh, it did enough for us to make it. Um, I know there were other diorama pieces that we tried in resin that were um, not as successful. Um, you really need to make a lot of them to make the to make to make the uh, plastic tooling tooling for the molds pay off. So it's it, it's not. It's a it's a lot of tooling. The, you know the, the cost of the tooling for the Ghostbusters diagrams is tremendous, and um, you know that's incorporated into the price of each action figure. But if you had to sell it on its own, how many people would realistically actually buy go out and buy a three or four hundred dollar rooftop diorama made out of plastic? I don't know. I don't know that number. I don't know if really there's a lot of research for that aside from you know how many Buffy plastic dioramas we sold however many years ago, um, and uh, even that. It's hard, it's hard, it's not really something you can really do a direct correlation with. It's a bit of a long answer for saying it's not something that we are currently planning to do. Um, but any time, but we, you know, we're trying to make the diorama pieces that come with our sets cooler and we're looking into other, you know, buildable dioramas or, or um, if not buildable dioramas, and buildable figures uh, that we can do in everything that we do just to get that appeal because we see that this is a successful, uh, successful model. Any other questions? Yes. Well, it probably starts with um, the president uh, coming up with a line plan. You know, he's the one who's ultimately going to have to write the checks on this stuff. So I think he he chooses he he figures out which character he gets input from the team, uh, but he figures out which characters are the ones that would be the most sellable. Uh, you know, you really have to start strong. And there's plenty of toy lines I can point to where they started off with like you know maybe kind of a mix, and then you know the secondary character trying to serve as popular, and then it leads to problems with sales. So you have to start off on a strong foot. Um, 
and so he, he you know he, he could he could tell you who the most recognizable ones are and that then you know we revise that a little bit and then there's sometimes the 2d do you work with any um eli and adam do you work with any 2d uh, how much how often do we give you 2d for the projects you develop both it depends uh well let's see with the uh, recently i've uh, was just given uh, just basic directions as I would uh, uh, the, put the piece together. Uh, there was this one uh, item uh, Vinnie made, I just sculpted for them recently, which I kind of had to uh, do the control art myself. It was like one of those unusual situations. Um, what else? Uh, however, there was a few other lines, uh, which there's a few other figures I've done in which we everybody just, which I kind of went on, um, uh, you know, just uh, verbal description and uh, sending it, uh, inf and just sending images back and forth. And they would, uh, the guys from Diamond would say, like, you know, okay, we, we like this, we don't like that, or could you tweak it here, tweak it there. But uh, but that was more recent. Uh, as a tradition, when I first started uh, working with them, they would usually send me uh, a control art with uh, at least three different views of the piece and. You know, with dimensions on it, like how tall they want it, what position they want it in, and uh, so on and so forth. But there comes a point where you kind of have to, we can't uh, follow the control art like uh, too blindly. At least sometimes you have to make sure you were uh, uh, following, uh, you've got other references around to make sure that you're sticking true to the subject. Yeah, with um, Ghostbusters line, uh, usually get supplied with 2D turnaround artwork, so it'll be a front, back, side, side view, then uh, additional views of all the accessories that are included with them, so the Ghostbusters come with a lot of stuff. Uh, then something like the Dark Tower line was a scramble to get that done for you guys in time for Toy Fair last year, so they just gave us reference and told us make them, you know, select style action figures, so we have done enough that we know what to do, how much articulation, and generally what they should look like. So that was just done with photo reference. And Marvel Select, not a lot of. Oh, yes, yeah. it depends on whether it's movie based or comic based. If it's comic based, it's usually you just go I'm for a comic book nerd. So and they're like, here's the error we're yeah, thinking about. Go make, for it. make me a Spider Man. And I'm like, I know what Spider Man looks like. <laughs> and Jason, with the paint, uh, do we? Uh, how often do you get? Um, like say a, a, like a Pantone color reference versus um, like just photo Very reference rare. and guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so usually you're just you have the photos and you just have to try to match it as best you can. Yeah, you know, there's a lot of trial and error, but you know, just like Adam said, uh, with the experience, you kind of if you can Google something and just go from looking at the lighting and stuff, and then eventually you kind of just find that happy medium and go from there. And most of the license workers are you know stuff go back and forth. So some things are simple, some things are in depth, um, but um, and I should say that each step along the way, they're being approved by somebody in the studio. So uh, the list of characters, yes, no, no, you can't do him, yes, you can do him. The 2D, yes, great, looks fantastic, change this. The sculpt, change the sculpt. The paint, uh, change this paint. Uh, sometimes even, oh, we know we have to change the sculpt, so go back and change the sculpt and then change the paint. And uh, packaging, the packaging approved. Yeah, it's all. A lot of times we get uh, we'll get proper reference after the project's done. <laughs> when, we, when they when the studio tells us to make changes, they'll send the proper stuff that you guys that you guys begged for in the beginning, but then they wouldn't provide it to you until they actually start the physical model. So then then we'll then we'll get that. There's a lot of stuff that we need that some of the companies don't necessarily need just because of the level of detail that we get into and the diorama pieces. You know, we're like, Can you send us a picture of the background. And Let's see what we have, and you know sometimes it's hard to get a hold of that, uh, and sometimes yeah it's not until they know what we're making and see what we're making that they say oh well they're going to need something like this where, where can we get it. That's, that's a good question. Uh, yes, sir. I was wondering also how often do you get the weigh in from the town as far as getting approval for their likeness? I think. Pretty much all likeness work that we do requires approval from, if not the talent themselves, then whoever they have looking at the product. Um, it may not be them, them themselves, it may, they may have someone to do it. Um, or it's in the case of, uh, even with uh, late actors, it'll be their estate or family. Uh, 
but the, for every light mist that we've ever done has been approved. Um, and you know, it's uh, we, we try to get as close to the, that and what they look like as possible. And sometimes people have different opinions about how they should look, and uh, you know, we have to respect their wishes, obviously. But uh, yeah. if everybody's asked a question, come on up. I'll give you a free fidget spinner if you want one. Uh, I'm going to move on with the slideshow. I'll come back to you in just a second, sir. Because uh, I just realized I don't want to run out of time and I haven't shown everything. Uh, so next, uh, moving on to Gotham. Uh, you may have seen some of these figures of Toys R Us. This is Gotham Series 4. Uh, Mr. Freeze, Azrael, and Hugo Strange. Uh, but there will be select versions of these uh, where we had to do some last minute changes to the dioramas. Uh, but those will be coming out uh, within the next month or so. Uh, with a new repainted Ha 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 Joker uh, graffiti and mayoral poster uh, diorama. The posters will be, or I think, are applicable. You can put them wherever you want. And then, um, so half will come with Azrael, half will come with Mr. Freeze. I think Mr. Freeze comes with the bottom half, and Azrael comes with the, the fire escape. And uh, Hugo Strange will come with that chair. And that will only be in comic shops and specialty stores, so definitely pre order them if you have them. Uh, Muppets Series 3 just hit stores recently. Uh, I both basic, uh, not at Toys R Us. Uh, so these are only available at comic shops and specialty stores. So if you've been looking for the basic versions to show up at Toys R Us, uh, head to your local comic shop, see if you can order them in if they don't have them. Uh, go to an online retailer, Entertainment Earth, Big Bad Toy Store, Amazon. Uh, Series 3 uh, is out and available. Uh, the, the, the figures to the left. Uh, figures to the right are Series 4. Uh, Sam with Rizzo, uh, Dr. Teeth with Zoot, and Swedish Chef with a whole bunch of stuff. And uh, those are um, still being finalized for production. Um, we're waiting to get in some last minute orders before we commit to a number. Uh, but if you have not pre ordered Series 4, I highly recommend you pre order Series 4 now. Uh, we'd all like to see them made, and uh, the more orders, the better, uh, to be honest. So please, Series 3, Series 4, I want to see these all, all these figures out of stores. Uh, Batman Animated Series, uh, we're continuing our uh, DC Gallery uh, 9 inch PVC diorama line. Uh, the 25th anniversary of Harley Quinn is coming up very soon. Uh, I believe that Catwoman, I don't believe she's out yet, but she should be out very soon if she's not. Uh, we just solicited Robin, so you can pre-order him now. And Batgirl, uh, if she's not out, she'll be out very soon. Nightwing's a little bit further off. And I'll show you one more in a minute that uh, I've placed under a different category. Uh, resin busts. Um, for Batman the Animated Series, we have uh, Mr. Freeze and the Riddler and the Penguin and a 25th anniversary Harley Quinn coming up. And Harley Quinn uh, will come with an interchangeable head uh, with her in her policewoman disguise, just a uh, blonde hair tucked up under the hat. And there's a silver frame that fits around the base, so you can either display it with the frame or without the frame. And the frame uh, says it has her 25th anniversary logo. Uh, resin for Batman the Animated Series, uh, if you haven't picked up your uh, emerald studded Poison Ivy from your collection statue, we have some available down at the booth. Uh, and we offered this, but um, we are now holding off on it for a little while uh, to give it some more room. Uh, this uh, Harley Quinn, ho ho Harley's Holiday, uh, based on the episode of the Endman series, will be offered at a later date, probably at the end of the year or early next year, uh, for pre-order. Uh, but we are still going to make it. Uh, for Batman Beyond, we've got uh, a Bruce Wayne up for pre-order. Um, there are still uh, retailers selling the masked Batman Beyond on the floor. Uh, we have unmasked Batman Beyond still at our booth. And we will be doing some more in this bus line. And this is a PVC diorama, that $45 PVC. This is on display down at the booth. I think it's pretty cool. Um, and you can check it out down there. We haven't solicited it yet, but uh, keep an eye out for a pre-order in the next couple of months. Uh, Justice League, and we've got the uh, Flash and Speed Force Flash bus down at the booth, uh, exclusive to the show. And uh, Doomsday is coming up next. And for Superman, we've got the bust of Brainiac, and we're also going to be doing a vinyl bust bank, slightly larger than our busts, much lower price point, $23 versus $60, and we'll have a coin slot in the back and an access door in the base. And that'll go along with obviously our Batman and Robin vinyl banks, and also Joker and Harley Quinn. Uh, Alien Covenant, uh, we've got a vinyl bus bank, you can see down the case, uh, that's going to be coming out, I think, pretty soon. Uh, I think we're getting pretty close to release on that. Uh, Batman Classic TV Series, uh, the Shakespeare life-size vinyl bus bank ships to comic shops on Wednesday. So uh, if you have a pre-order in, it should be arriving then. Uh, if you have ordered from online, it will be 
getting to them on Wednesday, possibly sooner, and uh, should be on the, its way to you by the end of the week. Uh, the resident statue of uh, uh, Robin from Batman is uh, he's still in pre-order, uh, but uh, Batman is out now. The two go together to do a double punch. Um, look, for, look for Robin uh, to hit in the next couple months, I think. And we just showed off for the very first time our vinyl bus tank of Batgirl. Uh, so that just means that you heard the show. We haven't offered it to retailers yet, so I'd look for pre-orders to open up the next couple of months. Uh, Back to the Future, we recently reissued our uh, electronic um, hover to look the time machine. Uh, it was previously a retailer exclusive, now it's available uh, everywhere, so you can order it through your local comic shop or even our online web store. Uh, same with the Frozen uh, hover time machine, which has a different paint scheme. Uh, both of them light up and have sound effects. I left the Vinny Mates on here for another presentation, but we make Vinny Mates for a lot of this stuff. So if you're interested in Vinny Mates, uh, uh, definitely come check them out. They're fun four inch vinyl figures. Uh, Pulp Fiction, uh, you may not have seen them at our booth, but they're actually on display over at the Diamond Comics booth um, because they're very close to shipping to stores. Uh, I would expect to see them uh, ship to stores in the next month or so. And uh, this is Series 1, uh, Marcellus Wallace, Butch, and uh, uh, Jules. And then Series 2 is Vincent and Mia, and let's see if I remember who was in Series 2, Vincent, Mia, and, oh, Jimmy. Jimmy, uh, played by Quentin Tarantino there in Series 2. So. Uh, we're finalizing all those prototypes now, uh, exhaustive back and forth with uh, Quentin Tarantino to make sure they're exactly right, and uh, then we'll offer them for pre-order as soon as we can. And then after we put out four waves of Pulp Fiction, or possibly simultaneous with Pulp Fiction, we'll start offering our Kill Bill Selects. And we have at least, at least uh, six of those, I think, uh, possibly more. I think we might have three waves of Kill Bill, so it'd be 21 figures total. Uh, Dawn, uh, we worked a lot with Joseph Michael Linsner in the past. We're going to be doing uh, PVC dioramas. Uh, I'd leave under the gallery brand. I don't know if we're going to be re-bringing re back Femme Fatales for this, uh, but we're going to be doing Dawn and Sinful Susie. Nine-inch scale PVC, $45 suggested retail price. And our gallery line continues for Marvel. Uh, it's been a big success for us. Um, Old Man Logan on the left there is actually out in stores now, but uh, Ironheart, uh, Spider-Woman, uh, Gwenpool, uh, Iron Man uh, and Jean Grey are all upcoming. I think Iron Man is out as well. Jean Grey actually hits, I believe, this Wednesday. Uh, but the other three are all upcoming. And of course, we have, uh, there will be a variant, uh, Dark Phoenix, that we had here, some here at the show, and uh, some will be at uh, GameStop stores starting this week. Uh, and we have the Unmasked Ironheart still at the booth. Uh, and also, um, and so we'll come back out and pick one up before the end of the show if you want to grab one. Uh, here you can see Cap uh, Captain America just offered the three previews, Silk, uh, Daredevil, and an Unmasked Gwenpool. The Unmasked Gwenpool will be an exclusive at GameStop. The other three are available through your local comic shop. Uh, let's see, Black Panther uh, should be coming shipping to stores fairly soon. I think we've got production samples, so it should be in a month or so. Uh, the Guardians of the Galaxy are a little bit farther out. These three dioramas will be coming out uh, probably early fall. Our Netflix dioramas are going to start rolling out very soon. Uh, Luke Cage, I think, hits within the month, uh, followed by Punisher and Daredevil, and then Elektra, and then Jessica Jones. A little bit after that, we just offered her, and then Iron Fist, who we just de uh, debuted here at the show. Uh, we, un we recently offered pre-orders on our Hulk, Armored Hulk, uh, Gladiator Hulk from Thor Ragnarok, as well as Valkyrie. Uh, she's actually changed slightly. You can see her down the booth. She doesn't have the dagger and uh, her cape has changed color slightly. Uh, and also that Spider-Man Homecoming PPC. These were just offered, so they're gonna be, uh, you know, end of the year release. So. Uh, there's also a Thor down there. He's still pending approvals. So I don't have a good photo of him yet, but it will be uh, not a Gladiator Thor, it'll be more um, the traditional armor Thor that he wears in the movie. Uh, the Premier Collection, resin statues, uh, slightly larger scale, uh, somewhere between uh, 10 and 12 inch scale. Uh, you can see here, um, some of the upcoming pieces, Thanos, Iron Man, Psylocke, Wolverine, Spider-Gwen. Now uh, those last three are, are, I think, getting pretty, we've got production samples, they're getting pretty close to release. We just recently offered uh, Venom and Captain America and this uh, Spider-Man here, sculpted by Clayburn Moore. Uh, the, and at the show we debuted uh, Deadpool, sculpted by DJ Dean and uh, Moon Knight. Uh, 
uh, resin busts for Spider-Man Homecoming, uh, available now for pre-order, and we just showed off our first um, uh, statue for the movie with the Avengers masks from the bank robbery scene. And milestone statues, I believe we are shipping the Th our Battle of Thor, Battle Armor Thor, next Wednesday. It's a very big piece, very big box, about $200 retail price. I think this one's about 18 something inches tall. Uh, I think the, the Armored Thor is actually 225 suggested retail price. Um, slightly smaller scale. Uh, it's, a, it's certainly just as big, but it's a slightly smaller scale for the figure than uh, the movie pieces. So Doctor Strange and Captain America and Iron Man, those are about $200 each. And those are a little bit further out. Uh, I think we're, getting, we're still a couple months away from those. Uh, Marvel Select, uh, Lady Deadpool should be out within the month, followed by Netflix Daredevil, and he'll have the season two mask, no crack and uh, Spider-Gwen, um, and then some, somewhere in there, uh, Spider-Man Homecoming will come out along with Star-Lord with Rocket and Drax with Groot. Uh, you can see uh, down at the booth for the first time the uh, Gladiator Hulk from Thor Ragnarok and Gladiator Thor from Thor Ragnarok. And finally, uh, our Hydra bottle. I just put that in there because it's really cool. It's the only bottle opener we're currently uh, in production on. Um, we do have a big supply, a big array of Marvel bottle openers available, but this is the next one we're going to be doing. We thought it was kind of fun. So if you need a bottle opener and are very evil, then uh, this may be for you. And that's the end of my slideshow. So um, I can get back to taking some questions. Um, did I tell people to come up and get a fidget spinner if they wanted one? Did they come up and I didn't give them anything, or did they come up and not decide they didn't want it? <coughs> I don't mind talking to them. Handing out for just there. Uh, what was your question, sir? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what was your baby's question? Uh, uh, what is the process of painting the, the, on the characters? Do you guys use the, uh, like a printer machine or do they have people painting them? Or, uh, You're saying like, uh, so like just painting a prototype? Like yeah, the process? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it just breaks it down. Uh, first off, what you're painting, what, what material are you painting the physical print? Are you painting the physical casting? Uh, depending on what color the casting is, if it's tinted, you want to prime it. Um, I usually don't use any primer on my paint because the more primer you have, the more detail it actually takes away from the actual because you're putting primer and then paint on top of it. Uh, we usually just go in with acrylic paints. Uh, they're the most sustainable. You know, an animal, an animal can stay tacky, but uh, you know, just breaking down your colors. You know, we usually start off with lighter tones and then darker um, because uh, and we'll airbrush a lot of it down. So a lot of base tones will be sprayed. Um, my shop, we don't really do any masking. Everything is hand painted with brushes. So uh, it just it depends on the paint consistency. You know, the thicker the paint, you want to water it down more. So you know, a couple paint, you know, a black obviously will usually coat in like one or two coats. If you're going to hand paint a yellow, you're going to break it down into like you know six coats, so you don't get like heavy brush strokes, uh, any of that. And then you go into like. Um, Wipes or stains, however you want to call it, where you can go in and like dirty things up or add like uh, depth, and then you can go in with dry brushes where you can take your paint with um, you know a brush and you can just powder it out and you want the top surface. Um, a lot of techniques I've been using lately since I'm doing more portraiture work, I'm actually taking makeup pads and sponges and I'm using pastel powders. So I'm cutting the uh, what you would use for your own face. I'm actually cutting them into small little things and I'm gluing my toothpicks and I'm going in like six inch heads and I'm doing like just makeup effects. So it gives. Anything you're working on, depending on where you're going, uh, there's just a lot, a lot of experimentation. But you know, it's mainly depending on what type of paint you're using. Uh, I've seen people paint prototypes with oils, so you know, um, I don't think that's what we, we use because of production-wise. But acrylics usually your best bet, your safest bet, because they dry fast. Uh, they have a flexibility to them, um, and uh, sometimes they, don't, they really don't scratch as bad. But you know, and then we airbrush too. Like so, when we're done doing our base coating and taking it as far as we can by hand. Then we'll go to the technical side of airbrushing, adding shadows, um, textures. Uh, there's all different things you can do with the airbrush by taking off the nozzle and when you pull back the trigger, instead of just giving you a smooth spray, it'll give you a splatter spit, uh, effect. So uh, pretty much just incorporating that into what you're looking for is pretty much what you need to do. So. Another question. Yes. And do you guys listen to certain certain kind of music when you guys get inspired? With me, when I'm yeah, but all, all you guys, I'm, I'm strictly, you guys the music I'm strictly in death metal, so but <laughs> my majority of my employees like get mad at me, and uh, you know they'll put in their earbuds and stuff. But the, normally that's going on also when I'm very mad. So when my employees hear death metal, they know not to bother me. So but yeah, I, I listen to boy bands, <laughs> <laughs> like like the Backstreet Boys. <laughs> Eli, do you have a favorite artist to listen to? Uh, sometimes I play movies in the background. 
I like to play apocalypse now in the background, either for white noise or just listen to uh, crime stories uh, or just movie scores. And uh, occasionally, uh, maybe just other bands from Europe that you probably never even heard of. <laughs> yes, sir. Oh, Zach, did you mention you're done with the Femme Patels only for the Dawn series, or is it for all the Femme Patels, including the DC Universe and the uh, Justice League Unlimited? Did you say, uh, uh, are we done with it? Yeah. Or, no, 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 I just meant the brand name, Femme Fatales. Um, when we started doing Marvel superheroines, heroines, uh, and DC, well, it made sense for the DC, um, you know, the girls from the DC series. But once we started incorporating Batman and Joker into it, we couldn't call them Femme Fatales. And once we were doing Marvel characters like Captain Marvel, you know, we can't really call her a Femme Fatale. So we actually engaged in a long, exhaustive process to figure out what the name would be, which for a very simple name like Gallery, you wouldn't think it would be very long and exhaustive, but it was. Finding something that was not being used for another line, and it, there actually is even another line of statue that, that has gallery in the name of it. Um, but uh, gallery is what we got to, and you know we think it's applicable, and we've uh, you know talked about building your gallery because you know um, it's a, actually a line of statues that you can collect and won't break the bank for the most part. So it's that's pretty much become the new name for Femme Fatales, the PVC line, which pr before was just girls from comics and our imaginations. Um, not my imaginations, other people's imaginations. And uh, I just wasn't sure if the Dawn, I haven't checked with my boss to see if he wants to put the Femme, if he want, if we would keep the Femme Fatales brand alive by keeping it on um, characters that uh, it, app it applies to, or if we're gonna um, have it fall into the Gallery brand because the Gallery line has become so successful for us since incorporating AC and Marvel. But we will continue to make PVC statues across all markets and. Uh, and we're constantly looking at new lines and we're looking at expanding the DC line into some interesting areas. So there's, there will be galleries. They, okay. They're doing very well for us. Okay, thanks. Come on up and get a fidget spin. I'm not walking down there anymore. <laughs> All right, yes, sir. Uh, hello, um, I'm a big fan of the Marvel Select uh, Carnage and uh, Venom figures. And I was wondering, are there any uh, plans or projects for other characters and uh, symbiote characters in that line? Or perhaps female symbiotes? <laughs> I don't believe there are any current plans, but uh, Chuck uh, maps out a year at a time, and I don't think he's actually gotten to 2018 yet, to be perfectly he's a, honest. He's a big Spider Man fan. He's a huge Spider Man fan. I don't know how much he loves the symbiotes. I think he made Venom because you know, it's a classic Spider Man character. And I think he made Carnage because he saw how well people responded to Venom. Um, but uh, um, after Carnage and Venom, it's. Um, and we did Agent Venom. Yeah. This is obviously, but um, and we did anti venom, so we, I think we did that before the other two. So um, you know, it's entirely possible. Uh, you know, I, I forget who the female venom is. Scream, scream, and scream. scorn, scorn. scorn. Okay. Yeah, they're a little bit further down on the totem pole in the wish list of characters, but um, uh, you know, there are other maybe more um, active. I think Toxin is no longer active, but uh, I think I just saw another. Oh, you know what? There's a whole venom burst thing coming up, which is really cool. And I've been trying to get them to do something. In mini mates for that because you know we're always looking for cool new characters for mini mates, but maybe something will come out of that. Maybe uh, maybe maybe some venomized version of a popular character will will make sense for a figure. Uh, I, I'm not sure. Uh, the the poisons look pretty cool too. The poisons that hunt the venoms, but uh, that's just me talking. Uh, he may have his own ideas about what he wants to do in 2018. We always got to do a lot of movie stuff, but uh, he always wants to get comic stuff in there. But now he wants to kind of get some TV stuff in there too. So um, it's it's a balancing act. Uh, especially when we only have a certain number of slots per year that we're allowed to make. So, fingers crossed for more com symbiotes, um, unless you like classic comic characters, in which case, uh, fingers crossed for more classic comic characters. Okay, cool, thank you. Yes, sir. I just want to say uh, I'm a huge fan of the uh, Universal Monsters line. Uh, in fact, I own one of them. I uh, happen to own the uh, Toys R Us exclusive uh, Lon Chaney Phantom of the Opera finger. It's my favorite. And uh, just thinking about that, uh, is that line officially retired, or do you guys plan on revisiting the Universal Monsters line in the future? Uh, it has been inactive, but we have talked about revisiting it in the uh, near future. So uh, it is not dead, it is uh, resting. <laughs> um, and uh, we definitely would like to make more, and um, we've recently been talking about what we could do if we were to continue the line. So it was entirely just a, a uh, Life's thing is they focused on their new movies. You know, we uh, we stepped away from the classic stuff for a little while, but we we hope to uh, get back into it. 
And was it was it difficult to try to get some of the likenesses for some of the old actors? Like for instance, I think of uh, the old Dracula figure. I know looking at it, it looks nothing like uh, Bela Lugosi. I'm not saying it's bad. It's a really gorgeous figure, but. Uh, it just makes me curious as to how difficult it was to get the likenesses to use, you know, like Bela Lugosi's image or Boris Karloff's image for Frankenstein. Uh, we had Karloff. Um, so we've had Karloff and we had Lon Chaney and who else did we have in that? Um, we did not have Bela Lugosi. Um, we could not make Bela Lugosi work for that figure, so we went with something else. Um, the Elsa Lan the, the Bride of Frankenstein is actually also not an Elsa Lan, just a like this in case. You may have noticed that. Um, so, um, so some likenesses were available, and some were not. Uh, some figures you can't do if you don't have the likeness. Some figures you can. You have to make them non-likeness. Um, but the ones that were Lon Chaney were approved by Lon Chaney Estate and uh, Karloff. And we even actually did a, a Glenn Strange Frankenstein retro cloth, not as a seven inch, but as an eight inch. Um, and uh, I believe Glenn Strange might actually be um, managed by Universal. His, his likenesses. I'm not sure if we, his estate is even involved at that point. Or is it Karloff? One of those is actually like part of the universal license. If you have the universal license, then you have the rights to to uh, to uh, to that to that likeness. So so yeah, no, we we obviously would want to look into any characters we weren't able to do before. Um, yeah. See if we can either pursue likeness to make a new figure, a different figure, better figure. We updated some of the figures. We haven't updated all of them. These are all possibilities. Uh, no specifics have been really discussed. Well, like I said, I really enjoyed the uh, the Phantom of the Opera one, especially the Cheney. And uh, hopefully, sometime in the future, maybe it'll be cool to see uh, the uh, uh, Claude Rains version of uh, Phantom from the 1943 version. That would be very cool. Very cool. Thank you. Thank you. Come on up and get a fish dinner. Come on. Yes, sir. Uh, hi. I'm interested in knowing if uh, other Tim Burton uh, creations are going to be in production, like Mars Attacks or something like that. I don't think there's anything in the works right now um, that could change um, beyond Nightmare and uh, what's the other thing that we're doing this Tim Burton? I'm totally blanking on right now. Corpse Bride. Oh, we're not doing Corpse Bride, but I thought there was something else Tim Burton. I, oh, Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice, we're doing Beetlejuice. Um, we're not doing select figures for that, obviously. Um, I don't know if that's something that's available to us. Um, I don't know if it's in our current license or even a license that is available to us, but uh, if the Beetlejuice stuff we're doing now, Mini Mates, Mini Mates, Tumblers uh, do well, maybe that's something we could expand to in the future. Um, but uh, I don't know if we're looking at uh, Corpse Bride or Edward Scissorhands, it would be awesome. We've done Edward Scissorhands merchandise in the past, but obviously not figures. Um, uh, you know, we love his movies. Um, I don't know if all of them are necessarily, you know, uh, once we leave that, but uh, there are certainly a couple of real winners in there that would be good for merch. Thanks. Thank you. Hi, what's your question? Oh. Um, I just want to know if we're going to be making any more Hydra toys or anything like that, like action figures or something. For Hydra? We actually have a mini meet, one of our two inch figures uh, that we're doing of Captain America in his uh, new use a uniform with a sheet with a triangular shield and a mostly blue outfit. And uh, he actually has a removable, uh, ch changeable torso, so you can see his secret uh, Hydro symbol uh, tattooed on his chest. Um, but that's from the storyline, the Secret Empire storyline, that uniform. Um, the very first issue he wore, and it was revealed that he was uh, he was working for Hydra. So um, that's the only thing I think we currently have planned. We've made some. Uh, Cool figures in the past that had Hydra characters as part of the base, and we released some Hydra agents as mini mates. But um, in terms of um, the Hydra specific product, besides that uh, magnetic bottle opener, I don't think we have anything besides that mini mate. But, uh, but yeah, people like Hydra, so it's certainly something that we consider. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Okay, cool. Come on up and get a fidget spinner. <laughs> Hi, what's your question? <laughs> Uh, I'm sure it's been asked many times. Any chance? I love your mini mates. DC coming back anytime soon, or is that still a? Uh, I think in the mini mates <coughs> panel, Chuck said no, no, no chance. Um, I'm excited that we were able to do Watchmen movie mini mates and uh, Gotham mini mates. You know, we just did Mr. Freeze in there, and uh, I, I want to see. We are doing the DC mini mates. Um, I assume he was more interested in mini mates, but we certainly do have.
have the Vinnie Mates response has been great, and uh, Walgreens and Toys R Us are both going to be carrying them. We're going to make some exclusives for them, and it's going to be very cool. Uh, so hopefully, if you dig the Vinnie Mates aesthetic and you dig DC characters, you'll take a look at the Vinnie Mates. Um, but in terms of the two-inch posable figures, no, not so much. Um, and you know, I mean, have yeah, Marvel Select any chance of DC Select? Again, aside from it's uh, it's all down to that posable action figure category. Uh, you know. There are other licensors, bigger licensors than us, um, and also people who were there just before us, even if they're not necessarily that much bigger. Um, it's just a category that is not available to us for classic comic and um, you know modern movies and things like that. But static figures, uh, like the galleries and the mini mates, um, we actually are looking to expand that uh, and uh, get more uh, elements of the DC universe uh, to come into play there. So hopefully that's something that we can do. Yeah, uh, so we'll have, there will be more DC products, it just won't necessarily be posable. So hopefully that, that works for you. Yes, sir. I'm a big fan of the Marvel Select line, and I know Avengers Infinity War and Black Panther's coming up. I was wondering if there's any plans for figures of those. Uh, we are definitely going to be making um, some figures for movies next year, and uh, we've made figures for, I think, every movie this year, and I think well, every Marvel Studios movie this year, and I think we did most of them from last year. So I think you can expect to see a similar level of output from us uh, without us officially confirming anything or denying anything. But uh, we are looking at the characters in Infinity War and seeing what makes sense there, and uh, we're looking at Black Panther and, um, and seeing uh, what we can do there. So there's, those are definitely uh, on our list of uh, our to-do list for things to do for next year. Come on up and get my last fidget spinner, and then uh, I'm going to hand out some things to the people who asked that question. Uh, for Nightmare Before Christmas, I got a uh, Dr. Finkelstein and a uh, glass. I'm going to give these to the lady who asked the first question about the sculpting. Oh, very good. Yay! <laughs> got to remember about all the questions that were asked, all the really good ones. Let's see. Or some of the boys are favorite questions. It was hers. It was hers? Yeah, she wins. All right. Colors. What was the question? It was about... Um, Colors. Uh, yeah. Colors. Yeah. 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 It's about how the, how the, how the thing, how you came up with the figure and how the right. figure is. Everybody's able to answer it. Yeah. And, yeah. and exactly. people, are, everybody, you got everybody involved. I'm oh, sorry, it's the end of the con. Oh, beautiful. The box is a little banged up, but I opened it up and it's beautiful inside. Cute. And uh, let's see, um, you know, uh, we got a question about a diorama. I'll bring one of these iron hearts down to you, the iron heart BBC. And uh, question about, uh, who asked the question about Universal Monsters? Is he still here? He left? Oh, he left. All right. Uh, that was a question. Oh, you know what? There's another question up front here on the aisle. Can you get my other iron heart here? Thank you everybody for coming. I really appreciate you taking the time. Um, I know it's uh, late the dead Sunday. It's been a long weekend and uh, you guys probably have a lot of places to go and some stuff you want to do before you go. So I'll let you go, but thank you so much for coming. We wouldn't be here without you guys. And uh, thank you all for the support.